Hey there, friends. Jeff Fritz here again. And we've been talking about minimal APIs and slowly growing them and moving things around to make them easier to manage. Well, in this video, we're going to add open API support to our minimal APIs with just a few lines of code and an additional NuGet package. Let's take a look at how we can take our contacts API that we've defined here and start adding Swashbuckle, the package, to enable Swagger and open API interactions. All right, let's do it. First thing I need to do is introduce the package Swashbuckle. We do that with a very simple command, .NET add package, right here at the command line. You can use the NuGet package explorer if you're in Visual Studio 2022 or Visual Studio 2019. And we're gonna add swashbuckle.aspnet core right there, okay? I'll press enter and it's gonna go locate that package for us and install all the capabilities into this project. So I will clear everything out there. All right, so let's introduce those Swagger capabilities into our application. So first thing that I'll do is I'll add some definition here for the builder to get access to the Endpoints API Explorer. This is how the Swashbuckle package is going to navigate around and find all the API endpoints inside of this ASP.NET Core web server. Next, I'm also going to add the ability for Swagger generation. Generate that contract information that Swagger tools can interact with and open API contracts can produce and interact with as well. Let's specify here, we're going to create and do some configuration here. So I will say uh, c.swaggerdoc and the name I'll give this is v1 and I'll give it some open API info here. So we'll specify a title, uh, Fritz's contacts API and um, we'll also give this some uh, version information as well. So version equals v1 again, and I can put a break right there. No, I need one there, and I also need one there. Okay. Next, I need to configure the HTTP pipeline further down here where we're mapping the interactions. I need to configure it so that it knows to listen for Swagger requests and also to generate a user interface that folks can interact with. So down here, I'll add right here, app.useSwagger, and I'll also configure that Swagger UI. Now, the Swagger UI has some options that we want to pass into it to configure and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'll specify a Swagger endpoint, and I want to specify the location of that endpoint. So let's listen to swagger slash v1 slash swagger.json. And I'll give it a name. Well, it's, it's the v1 endpoint, so I'll just put that on there. Done. That's all it took was those four lines of code with a little bit of extra configuration information. There's a bunch more configuration information that you can add into this, but we're just scratching the surface here in this minimal API series so you can see what you can work with. There's links in the description below so you can go to the official Microsoft documentation and dig in further on how to use Swashbuckle with open API and minimal APIs in .NET 6. Our web server is running. Let's go take a look at that contacts page. And there it is. There's Fritz and Crystal. Okay. And we can go take a look at the API for this and explore around it by going to slash swagger. And there's Fritz's contacts API. It's really large. Let me zoom back out a little bit. And you can see it's version one there. And there's a couple of features that this provides. You can access gets on the root. You can go to get contacts and you can get contacts slash ID. And if we open that one up, we can specify an ID. It knows that we can do that and it's going to return success. So let's try this out. 
I can specify here, I'll request ID2, and I can execute that. And if I scroll down, it shows me exactly how it's executed, the location that it navigated to, and there's the response. It returned Crystal from Dallas. There's a lot more you can do with OpenAPI to add into your minimal API projects to make it a lot more descriptive about what's going on inside of the application. And it's going to build and generate these contracts for you without you having to write special code around the actual contracts, the actual APIs that you've got living out there inside that, that contact extensions file that we wrote previously. I didn't have to modify that. This was all generated for me based on the contents of my APIs and the way that ASP.NET Core behaves. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you like this series of videos, make sure you click the like button below, click the subscribe button, and make sure you click that bell so you can be reminded of when more of my videos are going to be published out to YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure you check out the live series over on Twitch. I'll see you there.